Thanks very much, PJ and Wayne. Um, I'm hopefully I'm sharing the right screen. Uh, yes. Oh, good. Okay. Um, um, I'm very pleased to introduce Caitlin Dow, a second class cadet at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy. Caitlin joined Sea Scouts when she was 14. While a Sea Scout, she served as bosun of ship 584 in New London, Connecticut, and earned the quartermaster rank in 2017. For a quartermaster project, he did, she did restoration work for a historical society at Ledge Lighthouse on the Thames River. Caitlin is currently a second class or junior at the Coast Guard Academy, where she's a government major with a concentration on security studies. And we are going to start with a history of the uh, Eagle video. And let me just pull that up for you. And here we go. I'm Captain Michael Turner, the commanding officer of Coast Guard Bark Eagle. Welcome aboard. Right now we're in the aft part of the ship. I thought we'd take a moment to talk about the ship's history. Eagle was built at the Blum and Voss shipyard in Hamburg, Germany in 1936. She was one of three tall ships built by the German Navy during World War II. The first, Gorschvach, was built in 1933. The horse vessel, which we're on, was built in 1936. And the Albert Leo Schlegeter was built in 1937. At the end of World War II, the United States took horse vessel as a war reparation and renamed her Eagle. Back here on this bulkhead, we commemorate every one of the cadet training cruises that Eagle has sailed beginning with 1946. We're going to take a walk back aft and talk a little bit more about Eagle's history. You're now in the flag cabin. The flag cabin has been redone over the years. But as we walk back aft, we still have some of the original construction in the actual cabin itself. So all of this tiger maple wood that you see on the bulkheads is the original uh, from the ship's construction in 1936. A common question that we often get asked is, how did the Coast Guard wind up with the tall ship? And the answer is this coffee table. This coffee table was a gift from the King of Denmark and is a picture of the tall ship Denmark. Denmark was sailing around the world and in the summer of 1940 found itself in Jacksonville, Florida. With the outbreak of the war, the decision was made not to return to Europe and instead Denmark stayed in the United States. Beginning in the winter of 1942, Coast Guard Academy cadets trained on board Denmark from 1942 through 1944. Commander McGowan, who was on staff at the Coast Guard Academy at the time, spent his summers training on board with the Danish and the cadets. In 1946, he was chosen to be Eagle's first commanding officer and was sent to Germany to refit that boat and then sail it back to the United States with a half Coast Guard, half German crew. As we move forward to the wardroom, we'll see a plaque commemorating that maiden voyage with the names of all of those sailors. As the crew sailed back from Germany, annotated by this point here, they ran into a hurricane after a port call in, in Bermuda. The ship made it to port safely in New York, but she was tattered and in pretty bad shape. Immediately upon arriving in New York, the German crew members were removed from the ship and sent back to Germany. Here in the wardroom are the officers' mess. We have some photographs of Eagle, and one in particular I'd like to point out is this picture. That is horse vessel in Bremerhaven in 1946. That is how Commander McGowan found the ship. If you look closely in the background, you can see that Bremerhaven is completely destroyed by the Allied bombing campaign. So it really is amazing that the ship survived. 
The ship was pulled out and began repairs. And as mentioned, the crew consisted of a half, coast, half U.S. Coast Guard and half German crew. Like any crew, over time, over the six months that it took to, to refit the ship and make her safe to sail back, the crews became very close. And it was a sad occasion upon returning in New York when the German crew was removed and sent immediately back. Commander McGowan captured this adventure in his memoir called The Skipper and the Eagle. Good day, and welcome aloft on Coast Guard Cutter Eagle. My name is Chief Warrant Officer Spencer Greer, and I'm the sailmaster on board. We are currently 65 feet above the deck on the main mast and top platform. You might notice that we call Eagle a cutter, but she's actually not a cutter, it's a bark. A bark is any sailing ship with three or more masts that have square sails on their forward masts and fore and aft sails on their aft. Eagle, a bark, has 23 sails, 10 are square, and 13 are fore and aft sails. This is approximately 23,000 square feet of canvas, almost a quarter acre in size. Also of note, take a look at the hull of the ship. When the ship was built in the 1930s, arc welding was a new procedure, although not fully trusted. So when you take a look at the hull, you'll notice that it is both welded and riveted. They trusted weld welding enough to butt weld, but not enough to seam weld, so they riveted the remaining of the hull. I hope you have a great tour on Coast Guard Cutter Barkey. Good morning, all. Can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to introduce, um, I have with me today, Coleman Peppard. He's just going to do a quick intro as well. Hi, everyone. I'm fourth class Coleman Peppard. I'm from Charlestown, Rhode Island. And uh, as a, in my Sea Scout life, I was in ship 1909. Um, I wasn't quite as accomplished as Caitlin. I was only an ordinary, uh, but I, I love my so now I'm here to talk about the Academy with you. So today we're just going to talk about cadet life. Um, we decided to veer away from a little bit of the normal Academy majors and sports stuff and wanted to really share with you guys what it's like to be a cadet. So next slide, please. So this is an excerpt of what our daily POD looks like. POD stands for plan of the day. So this is something that's emailed to us every single day. So as you can see at the top, it has the cadets that are on duty for the day. And then it starts with morning formation, breakfast, different morning trainings we have, um, and then classes, lunch, and any evening activities we had. Um, this is an excerpt from a day that we had last year. So right now our schedule is a little different due to COVID, obviously. But this is just our average day with classes, sports period, and meals. Next slide, please. It's like a shame, Atlantic City doesn't have a gay bar. I'm telling you, it looks crazy. What? Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the SWAB summer experience. So, in order to become a cadet, you need to go through SWAB summer. Which is pretty much the basic training um, we have here at the academy. And it's one of those things that, you know, just like uh, what you would think of boot camp or something, uh, but instead of having drill instructors and um, detailers and all those things, you have second class cadets. So Caitlin was actually one of my cadre um, uh, training me throughout the summer. And the summer is really just one of those ways that you form really good bonds with your classmates uh, through all of the challenges that you're put through. Um, and so the picture of all, all of us in our operational dress uniforms with the big tire, uh, that's Alpha Company uh, during sea trials. And every single one of the 30 kids there, I feel like I have a great bond with just because we've gone through some pretty crazy stuff together. Uh, 
On the left, it's uh, Delta Company in formation, uh, studying their running lights with their sea bags. And on the bottom left, that's my uh, good buddy, Jack Braga, uh, getting his head shaved for the first time. Because of COVID, we went through a ROM period. Uh, so restriction of movement, we weren't um, getting our, most of our stuff. We got issued our computers, uh, but we didn't get our head shaved uh, the first day. We didn't get uh, issued most of our, our uniforms. So that was actually day 14. And uh, as you can see, he's pretty stoked about losing his hair. <laughs> Next slide. So fourth class year, um, after swab summer, you earn your shoulder boards. Um, and you're officially a student, uh, they tell you in the summer that the fourth class year is going to be harder than the summer um, just because of all the work. But it's really nice to, you know, get to act like a human again um, and really get to know your shipmates and play sports with them. So uh, I'm on the offshore sailing team and Caitlin's on combat arms team, right? Uh, and your, the bonds that you formed with your teammates are also like some of the greatest connections that you'll have in the academy. Um, so this year we had IC, an IC sports tournament, so intercompany sports, and we played ultimate frisbee and cornhole and all those kind of things. And it was really fun. Um, the bottom right picture is me uh, with all of my friends in Alpha Company um, on our first day of school. My mom was very happy with that picture. Uh, and then on the left, that's my roommate who's kind of zonked out on his desk uh, after a long day of work. But fourth class year is kind of special um, because you're squaring around uh, the hallways, which means you're not rounding your corners. You're going from turning, you're looking forward and then you turn 90 degrees immediately. And that's how you turn corners. And then you bus whenever you, in the, um, in the actual work day, you need to bus around and march in section to get to class or, uh, to get to whatever you need to go to. And then indoctrination tests. Part of fourth class here is learning all of the basic Coast Guard knowledge, like um, what assets we have as, in terms of uh, boats, cutters, and uh, aircraft, and all kinds of other things, such as the nautical dictionary or um, your uniform regulations, and just the special experiences of fourth class year. Next slide, please. So we're, I'm going to talk about some of the different summer experiences I've had. So summers here at the academy are very special. It's not like a normal college where you get to go home during your summers. We actually have 11 week training periods where we get to go out into the fleet or do different things. So for fourth class summer, obviously it's swab summer. But then once you become a third class, you get to go out to the fleet. So third class summer, you either get to go to a cutter or a station and then Eagle. So these are all pictures from my third class summer. Um, I had a very special Eagle experience. You can see in the top middle pictures, we went uh, from France to the Netherlands to Portugal, then sailed all the way across the Atlantic, stopping right in the middle for a swim call and went to Bermuda and then sailed back to New London. So those pictures are me up as high as cadets can climb up in the rigging. And then following that, I went to Kodiak, Alaska, which was super fun being from the East Coast. I'd never been out there. So that's an actual picture of me flying a C-130. I don't know why they trusted cadets to do that, but it was a great experience. Um, and then we got to land a helicopter in the middle of the mountains and that all sorts of different experiences like that. Um, most of my classmates went to stations where they got to actually experience going out on boardings and small boats. So third class summer is really your first experience of what it's like to be in the Coast Guard and it's a lot of fun. Next slide. Second class summer is also really fun. It's the summer I just went through. And like Coleman had said, it's very important to our leadership development because we become the cadre and we start teaching the swabs. So most of these pictures are of me as waterfront cadre. So I had a very unique experience getting to interact with all the swabs and teaching them how to sail. And 
making sure that they were safe. So it was kind of like my Sea Scout kind of brain coming back as cadre. And in addition to that, you also get to do a bunch of fun experiences such as coastal sail. So we have 44 foot sailboats that we get to take out. And normally in non-COVID times, you get to go to Block Island, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and it's six of your closest classmates all on a boat trying to figure out how to make it go, which is very unique. Um, then we also have what we call cat pee or sector experience. We get to go to an air station and go on different assets and see if, try out the aviation side, as well as the sector side. We got to go to a fishery school and kind of learn what it's like to do fishery boardings. And the most important part of second class summer is what we call rotor. So rotor is very similar to some of the things that we learn in Sea Scouts. It's a test that we have to take a second class on basic rules of the road. So that's what rotor stands for is rules of the road. So it's all of your crossing situations, your lights, sounds, all that kind of stuff we have to take a test on and we're required to pass that for graduation. Next slide. So first class summer um, is something that obviously neither one of us have gone through yet. Um, I'll be going through this summer. And first class summer is, again, time in the fleet. So this time it's a little bit different. You're gonna go to the fleet and experience what it's like to be an officer. So contrary to third class summer, you're kind of going to the fleet, learning what it's like to be enlisted. So you can understand what it's like for the people that you're gonna be leading one day. So you're kind of taking on the more enlisted role where you're scrubbing decks or painting. And first class summer is all about shadowing officers to see what your role in the Coast Guard is going to be like. So most first class cadets will go afloat. And then as part of that, they can also apply for internships, whether they're academic or Coast Guard related. So we just had our first uh, round of applications for different internships such as FBI, DIA, um, Cyber Command, different things like that. Um, I actually just applied for an internship to go to a Coast Guard um, station in Bahrain. So that's a very unique experience. Uh, we call that Pat for Swa, and I'm hopefully looking forward to doing that this summer. But other than that, it's just time on a normal cutter. Next slide. I believe that's it, yeah. So if anyone has any questions about any aspect of cadet life. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, um, Caitlin and Coleman. Um, excellent information and presentation. So we do have a few questions here. Um, one of the questions is the, the term cadre. You used cadre and it was in the presentation. Um, and some of the scouts uh, were wondering, what do you mean by cadre? Could you talk about that for a minute? Yeah, of course. So in a more boot camp experience, you would think of them as the drill sergeants. Um, you know, your typical people that you see in the pictures are the big, big dudes with the scary hats that are like super down over their face. So they're the ones, most people see them as doing the yelling, but they're doing, they're in charge of the training. So here we call them cadre and we're in charge of training the swabs. So that's making sure they know how to wear their uniforms, making sure they know all the in-doc that they need, and basically just leading them through swab summer to make them successful cadets here at the academy. And Fantastic. The whole effect of like drill sergeants are supposed to scare you. Of course, swabs, as, or I was scared of, you know, Miss Dow, I didn't know that she was a sea scout. Um, before coming here, and of course now I know that very well. Uh, but I was one of those swabs that was scared of her in the middle of the summer. Um, but you know, now we know each other well, and you know, you you just kind of it goes away after the school year begins. Outstanding. So that seems like there's um, a really tight camaraderie. So the next question um, is a. Uh, little more personal and related to Sea Scouts, speaking of com camaraderie, um, we have a question. Um, a former Sea Scout, do you know 
Cadet Hollister from California, either of you. The question the did name, not include what year they are. The name does ring a bell. Um, uh, we're both fairly, live fairly close to the academy. So um, when I was in high school, I got a lot of experience coming to the academy through scouts. So I believe I've run into them, but um, they're not currently here, no. Okay. Um, so another interesting question here. Um, do you have free time and what do you do on your free time? You know, do you, do you get liberty? Are you restricted in movement? Talk to us a little bit about your free time. So that's a very unique question. Um, cadets do get free time. Um, during a normal school day, normally that's taken up by sports period and different sports activities. And then following that, you're mostly just doing homework all night. Uh, depending on your major, you might go to bed at 10, you might go to bed at 1. It really depends on your time management skills, which is very a useful skill that's really harped on here at the Academy. Um, on the weekends, your liberty does depend on your class. So fourth class, get liberty on Saturdays and Sundays during certain hours, and then third class and, and second class get it on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and first class get Liberty on Thursdays as well. And this is all prior to COVID. Um, right now, we're all restricted to base, so we can't leave right now because of COVID, but on a normal year, yes, we do get Liberty. Um, another question, um, and it's for both of you. Um, given your Sea Scout experience, um, what inspired you to apply to the Coast Guard Academy? About what you know, what time period in high school were you? Junior, were a senior? How did you How did you get the inspiration to to apply? And what motivated um, pursuing a career in the Coast Guard? Um, for me, it was. Uh, one of those things that I kind of realized, I want to say late junior year, I want to say, or early junior year, um, where I was looking at colleges uh, from the spring break the time before, um, and I was thinking, like, well, maybe I want to be like a political science major, maybe a chemistry major. You know, I just took this chemistry class, and I did well in it. I really enjoyed it. Um, but that was, you know, during the school year, or and during the summer, I would spend my time, you know, sailing with Sea Scouts and doing the long cruises. And I, you know, thought back to how much I enjoyed that. And then I started thinking, you know, later into junior year, it was like, well, if I'm not, if I don't have a career that has something to do with the water, um, I'm going to drive myself crazy. So, you know, then you start those researching, you know, researching, well, what's the best way to make money? you know, make a living on the water. Um, and I looked at you know, Mass Maritime and Maine Maritime and SUNY and all these fun maritime schools. Uh, and then I eventually looked at the academies, so Naval Academy and Coast Guard Academy. Um, and the Coast Guard just has those humanitarian missions where, you know, you're helping people and you're saving lives and you're, you know, protecting, protecting the country close to home as opposed to maybe far away. Um, and you still get those opportunities to travel throughout the world with the Coast Guard. Um, and I just saw that and was like, well, that's the place for me. That's the job I want to have. So I applied uh, early action. And I found out last December uh, that I had my conditional appointment. And then I uh, reported in July. So that was really cool. Yeah, for me, I kind of knew pretty early on in high school. Um, I live quite close to the academy, um, only a few streets over, actually. So I grew up having cadets in the community a lot. We are required to do um, community service events. So I've seen a lot of cadets just out in the community a lot. And that was my first kind of exposure to them. 
So I knew from a pretty young age that I wanted to do this. And similar to Coleman, um, I also applied early action. I actually found out I got accepted at a Monday night scout meeting. Um, I was waiting for the email to come in. My phone blinged. I excused myself and went to the back of the room and screamed. <laughs> um, so it was really awesome that I got to share that experience with all of my scout friends. Um, something kind of unique that the Academy does have, uh, I, I did not get into the Academy directly. I went through a prep school program. So I was accepted to the prep school program where I did a very similar experience to Swab Summer, then went to the Naval Academy prep school in Newport, Rhode Island for a year. And following that, then I got my appointment to the Academy. So then I had to go through Swab Summer again and then uh, became a fourth class. So kind of a unique experience, but definitely something I don't regret. The extra year of school definitely helped to prepare me to be a cadet, and it's not something to be discouraged about. A lot of people here go through prep, so if you're looking to apply and that's, some, uh, that's an option that you get, definitely take it. It's so worth it. Well, I want to thank you both for sharing your uh, unique experiences on uh, life at the Academy as well as how you got to the Academy. Um, we are coming up to the end of time here, so I know there's some additional questions. Um, so maybe we 